Hi. Before we move on, let me correct an omission in the previous example. In the code that writes digits to a buffer that is placed on the stack, starting from this address, I forgot to put a terminating zero there. So uh, after the last digit is written, and we increment ebx register and we see that we have no more digits to write there uh, then i should have written a terminating zero just a single byte zero at this position and it only worked uh, when i tested it last time because there was already zero there on the stack the stack has been initially zeroed, but this is not something that we can rely on, so it was a mistake not to put the terminating zero here. And now that we have an ability to display any result that we have in register, we can further experiment even without a debugger. So let's talk about multiplication. We already know that we can multiply a number by 2 just by shifting bits one position to the left. So this is twice the original number. And if we shift by multiple bits, we can multiply by larger power of 2. This should multiply by 4. But what about multiplying by any other number? And we can use an instruction called imul to, for example, multiply this number by 3. And let's see the result. Yes, this is uh, the original original number times 3. And why, why is it called i mil? This i means that this is signed multiplication. And there is no uh, instruction that would perform unsigned multiplication that could be used like this. And it would not make much sense to have such instruction. Because if we had a number that would be unsigned number too large to fit into signed range. For example, a number like this one. Then even if we multiply by just two or three, we would immediately get a number that is too large to fit into 32-bit register. This is why we need an instruction that behaves a little differently. So we are going to have a mule instruction and uh, in this variant we cannot simply multiply by number we need to have it in a register or memory location. So let's put 3 into ebx register. And we are going to multiply by ebx. And in this variant of multiplication instruction, we do not specify the target register. It is always accumulator. In this case, EAX register that is multiplied, and the result is also stored into accumulator. So this is in fact a complete instruction that multiplies EAX by EBX and stores result in EAX, but not only EAX. This instruction gives us a complete 64-bit result. And the upper portion of this result is stored in another register. 
ADX in this case. And you can only change this register. So you can only change uh, by what value you multiply. You cannot change that this instruction always operates on EAX and stores result in EDX and EAX. In this specific case, uh, the number after multiplying by 3 is still small enough to fit entirely into EAX register. So when we show EAX, we get a correct result. And EDX register, which is upper portion of the number, should be zero. And yes, it is. But for example, if we multiply it by some larger number, then we have portion in EAX and we have some upper digits of this number in EDX, the digits that could not fit into EAX register. And this instruction also has a signed variant, so we can do imul with just a single argument and then this also uh, multiplies EAX by EBX and the result is stored in the two registers. But this time it is signed and so the upper portion is also going to preserve sign of the result. And if we multiply to negative numbers, we should get positive result. And yes, we do. And then we also have a division instruction, which is designed to operate in the opposite direction. So we can divide a large number that is across two registers EDX, EAX, and the result is going to be small enough uh, to fit into a single register. So we can divide by EDX. Let's use a positive number because this is unsigned division. Although we also have IDIF to perform signs division. This instruction is going to divide this large number by divisor in EBX. The result is going to be in EAX register and also there is a reminder which is stored in EDX. These all registers are set in stone. This instruction always operates on these registers. So you can only change this source, which is the divisor. And as you can see, this is the result of multiplication. We divided by 300 and we got this number back. As for the remainder, it should be zero because this number was exactly divisible. And yes, it is. An important thing about division instruction is that it can overflow. For example, if we tried to divide by one, then since this result is too large to fit into a single register, uh, then 
this instruction is going to fail. with an exception integer overflow which is also sometimes called uh, division by zero because it happens when you try to divide by zero but as you can see it also can happen when simply you divide by a small number and the result is too large to fit into a single register and another thing that you should know about uh, diff instruction is that it is incredibly slow. Multiplication not so much, but division is always very slow and you should avoid this instruction whenever possible. For example, to divide by 2 or any power of 2, you should never use diff instruction, you should use shift instruction. And in general, avoid diff because it is slow. That's all that I wanted to show this time. Thank you for watching.